Hello everyone and welcome again to my review video thing and I'm gonna I'm not gonna review a film this time. I'm no no film today. What you've got this time is and I I don't know if I've only done one of these but I'm gonna review a game and the game I'm gonna review today is the newest Tomb Raider. Now it's not new now, I know it came out was it late last year or early this year, I don't know, but I've only just managed to play it because I'm slow and not up to date and I live in a cave. But hey ho, and I'm going to say right now, it's amazing. It, it is one of the most beautiful, you know, uh, it's a, such a beautiful game. The level design, the characters, how everything feels, how it looks, how it plays. It is just a beautiful, beautifully made game. And I really, I cannot stop it. I mean, me and my dad uh, on the PS1, we played those two modes, and then I just fell out of it and didn't really pick up any of the other ones after that. But, you know you know, it's done exactly what it did. I know it's not like the prequel story, it's now a reboot, reimagining and sort of, you know, revival of the Tomb Raider franchise. But if this is where they're gonna go with all the future Tomb Raiders, you know, sign me for a subscription for them, I'll, I'll have all of them and I'll play more and I'll review them for you. But no. So you know, I may pick up the older Tomb Raiders that I've missed and go back to those, but I think after what I've played now, it'll be hard to beat because, you know, uh they've like I said, they've completely redone what Tomb Raider is and you know it's now a free roam adventure that is beautiful and you've got this whole island to uh, sift through and it's full of so many different historical things you know ancient from ancient Japanese ruins to World War II bunkers and then you've just got some modern research based sort of stuff and it's just so you've got such a diverse area to sift through and it's and like I said everything is just looks stunning you know the graphics are amazing I, if if you don't know me by now, I'm an Xbox player, I don't play PC, my brother has a PS3, which I've been on now and then, but, you know, I don't notice any graphical difference between them, but, yeah, I'm an Xbox player, I know some people say, you know, the graphics di differ between them and Xbox and sometimes misses out, but from what I've seen on this, it all looks amazing, you know, all the character models look great and the voice acting as well is great. You know, there's no character you hear and you want to punch in the face repeatedly, which I get in a lot of games, which annoys me when those characters can't be killed and don't die, because there's a lot of characters, I just want to die. But no, in all fairness, I think the characters I want to die in these are all the killable henchmen, because a lot of them just sound annoying, the stuff they talk about. If you play the game and you'll know what I mean, when you're just walking past, you hear their bullshit conversations. I don't want to hear them. Just arrow to the head, <laughs> done. And yeah, that brings me on again. They've got rid of her, you know, signature dual pistols. You can't have the pistols, don't get me wrong, and I've used them a lot. But now pretty much the signature weapon is the bow and arrow, and it is these, you know. There's not a lot of games that I know of where you get to wield a bow and arrow with these. I mean, the last one I played before this would have been Assassin's Creed 3, but this uses, uses it a lot better. I don't seem to run out of ammo as much either, which I would expect I would, being them stranded in an island, but no, you find ammo very easily. Uh, so yeah, the uh, sort of, it's not really a level up, it's just like getting so much, uh, is it XP? I'm not really sure if XP, you just do little things, find a relic here and there, and all of a sudden you get this skill point and you've got, you know, you've got all these skills you can buy to make your life easier. You can also find salvage and upgrade your weapons. <laughs> I've got to say this about the weapon salvaging and stuff as well. When you manage to take, you know, an old World War II machine gun, and then you can upgrade it into what looks like an AK. That takes skill. Alara's only an archaeologist, but she somehow manages to do that. I'm going to give her credit for that. Because I, I, if I found a World War II gun, and it, I don't care how much shell would you give me, it's going to stay a World War II gun. And it might be good, but it'll stay as that forever. I'm not going to be able to upgrade that thing into Jackal. But hey ho, that might be just me. I might just be below the times and stuff. Quite. But no. Uh, like I said, the gameplay is all fluid, it breathes well, and it is just great. I didn't have any lag issues or anything playing it. It's complete. Well, there is a multiplayer. I haven't played it personally. For me, it was a single player game, and I played it like that. And yeah, so yeah, for the single player, I didn't encounter any lag. There were no bits where it was like things wouldn't render for me or anything. I didn't have any of that, which is really good because I hated it. It's all that then brings you out of the game, but no, this one kept me through and kept me immersed in this game world forever and ever and ever and I deliberately took my time playing it because it was one of those games I didn't want to end I kept looking again it'd be like you 40, 60, 80 percent through this I'm just like no I'm getting closer and closer to the end I want to keep playing I want to get everything and yeah 
the collectible as well. They're not really collectible, I suppose, the relics and stuff. But the relics, documents, all that stuff, you want to find them. And that's good. I hate it when there's collectibles you just don't want to find. You just got no incentive whatsoever to go out and get them. But you know, with this one, the incentive was you want to know what cool artifact it is you find it, or documents of some guys lived in the island of yours, or a shipmate, or whatever. You want to know what all those are, and that's good because then again, it brings you back to play the game again and again and find all these things and get everything, which is good. I'll say now, you know, I've said about the characters and everything. There's one character who's a complete dick. Everyone, I think everyone will know who he is. I'm not naming names here. I'm really, I'm really not actually, I can't remember his name, that's how much I hate him. Um, but you know, you're Lara obviously, and the voice actress for her does it really well. And you know, you go you go really attached to her when it starts off, you know, I mean like I said, I haven't played as her uh, since the first game, that she was all grown up then, albeit, you know, she had like a pyramid for her face and stuff. But no, now she's this, and she's a lot younger and everything, and so you sort of go through this transgression with her, and you grow really attached to her, etc etc and it is does just make the gameplay more enjoyable and it is with the other shipmates you know you've got Roth who's like your mentor and stuff in it you are really attached to him and he's you know badass is I think the only word all I know is when your legs bleeding out and you're there trying to beat a wolf to death that that earns your badass points I don't care what you say so you know he is he is amazing when you see him but you know you strand on this arm, you don't really see that many of the other crew members or anyone really. Most of it, it is one of those generic games where it's just like, meet up with them, we will head down the hill. And they get there completely no problem, you follow them like five seconds later, and for some reason there is an army of guards that have not caught them, but will find you and shoot you a lot, and you will have to run around and get there, and it will take you an hour, and somehow they've been there four hours, they left an hour ago, you th but no. It's one of those games where that happens a lot and it annoys me because I'm just there thinking, why did these people not get caught? I'm the one with the bow and arrow and the shotgun. They, they should be dead. You know, they can't slip past these things. They get caught like three times. Uh, how many times I think you find, find someone get caught? It annoys me. It really does. The story was believable. You know, when I say believable, as believable as it's going to be for finding a lost civilization hidden inside a unknown part of the ocean where there is a never ending storm. That's as believable as it is. But in there, I believe the situations and the choices the characters make, everything, that's believable. They do what you'd expect them to do, which sometimes, I suppose, makes it predictable, but equally sometimes make it satisfying. So I'm not really going to judge it that much based on that. But no, the newest Tomb Raider game, Lara Croft Reimagining and everything by Square Enix, it is amazing and I love it. And if you haven't played it yet, pick it up and buy it. It's like 20 quid now. So yeah. and yeah just it's a good game and i can't wait to see what they bring out next for that franchise so yeah thank you and yeah i could go to like reviewing video games after some films thank you